Hello, my name is Ryan Weber, and today we are going to work in Isidore to create a step sequencer, but this is a video step sequencer. And what that looks like is it looks like a four channel input switcher with an integrated crossfade. All right, hopefully that makes some sense, but it will as we work through this, so there's no problems there. Let me start by adding some media to the, play, uh, to the scene. You're going to need a minimum of four different video sources for this exercise. I've already imported a few over to the side. Um, first, I'm going to set up our stage output so that I can see two videos side by side. It's just going to make the beginning of the switcher a little easier. So I'm going to shrink the width of this to 50% and move it over to the side. I'm going to duplicate these two play a different video, and move it to the other side. Okay, so now that we have two video sources playing side by side, uh, we can get on to setting up the, the switcher that we need to, to start with here. <clears throat> so with a four channel switcher, what we're gonna do is we're going to start by adding a selector. The selector is gonna have four inputs. And the selector itself is really a switcher. Um, but we're not done with that because really what we want to do here is have uh, two sources being switched simultaneously in sequence so that with a crossfade added between them that we get a seamless continual output. So with that said, we're going to duplicate the selector and we are going to add a counter to feed the selection of these. The, because we're looking at a continuous feed, we want the mode to be wrap rather than limit, the minimum input to be one, the maximum to be four, because we're dealing with four value inputs. And now we can connect the first selector's select input. But if we connect the, the next one the same, we're just gonna always have the same selection happening. What we really need is we need one of these to be one step behind the previous so that they're always in sequence. Where there's an actor that we can use called the value delay line, which by default is set to only have a single value in its delay line. So uh, you can see three and three will always they match because there's only one value in that delay. But if we add a second value so that there's the current value plus one more, now when we start jumping through, you'll see that these values are always out of sync by one. And when we move from four <coughs> to one, we have the four previous. So let's connect this up to our other selector here. And look at that some more. As we move through four and three, one and four and again this continues on in this manner so this is this is pretty good for what we want to do and we have two outputs here which is fantastic because right now we have two projectors feeding two sides of our stage so that we have easy feedback what we're going to want to do is just connect these two switchers essentially out to our outputs duplicate our media players movie players so that we can have, uh, let's see, a few different videos playing. And I'm going to introduce a little trick here quickly just because I can and because it'll save me a little bit of linking. I'm going to uh, introduce a few of these little user actors that I create. I've made for every type of media that, or every type of data there is in Isadora a through actor, which allows me to create little junctions. So now what I can do is connect each of these to the input of these through actors and connect the through actors to. Um, I didn't do that very smoothly. I connect connect them to multiples of these. And yeah, if 
you don't know how to do this, you hold shift and you can connect to multiple items. And oh, because I forgot to do it. So shift. That'll be the fourth one. Shift to the fourth one. And do the third one. And the second one. I wasn't very smooth about that, but let's just spread these out so they look a little easier on the eyes. That's fine with me. All right, so the reason I did this is because we're going to be connecting and disconnecting a few things as we build, and I didn't want to have to redo these selections a whole bunch of times. I only wanted to have to redo these selections, and you'll see how this becomes important later. But these, these user actors are really just placeholders that do nothing and connect through to media types. So let's look inside. See, there's just an input and an output connected together with the defined media type. So in this case, it's uh, GPU video. Uh, sure, update them. All right, so they're placeholders, but they make our patching a little easier. Okay, that was a sideline, but it'll help. Okay, so, wow, we already have a switcher happening. And if we start switching, you can see that the video on the left always makes its way to the right next and then off and the new video is put on to the left makes its way to the right so our sequencing is working left to right left to right and that's great so really what we have here already is a switcher and I want to encapsulate this into a user actor because it's gonna make my life just a little easier so what I will do is select the switcher element was really giving us those two channels in sequence controlled cut them add a user actor and you'll see that this already makes my patching just a little easier as I add a couple of inputs um, as I add those inputs all four that I need and connect them over. This is only four connections that I need to make without having to redo that little bit of patching to those selector inputs. I'm going to rename this as in one, in two, just keep everything in sequence, three, and four. Okay. Um, we also going to need some user outputs. I'm going to call this out1 because it is before the value delay. Duplicate that. You can name these differently if you needed to make things more clear. But I'm going to call it out2 because it's quick and easy. Now the only other thing we really need to do here is we're only, only going to be moving forward through this count. So we need one more user actor, which is going to be an input to the add trigger. And instead of add, I'm going to call that switch. And because I added that last, it's going to be listed on the bottom of my uh, input and output order. So I want to drag that up to the top just because I know that I'm going to be working on the top edge next. All right, so that is our switcher. I believe it works. Save and update all. I'm going to rename this user actor to video switch -er. and I am once again going to connect our outputs and our inputs so that we can have a look at this in with it up and running. I'm going to add a pulse generator so I don't have to keep clicking on that switch input. Comes in on the left, moves to the right. In the left, moves to the right. All right, so yes. Just got to make sure that our value delay is set correctly so that we have uh, a nice sequence of events occurring. All right. What is next? Well, the next thing we want to do 
is add a crossfade between these two outputs. So we will add a video mixer. And I'm going to work up top for now. Just because I know kind of what I'm doing here. Let's drag this over there. I want to have a video mixer that I am going to mix in between these. I'm going to keep these showing us what we currently are playing there. But I'm going to reformat this a bit so that our zoom is 25% on each of these. So you know they're nice and small. And I'm going to move them down and out of my way. There we go. So those are going to be sitting uh, over top. I'm going to change this to opaque even so they don't blend into the background. These are just going to be extra feedback for us for a little while. We'll get rid of them later. But it's helpful to be able to see what we're doing. We're going to add another projector with the default settings that now just shows the switch. And you can see that it's always, uh, at this point in time, it's always the same as the left-hand side one because we haven't mixed it. If we change the mix to 100, now it should be the background's the same as the right-hand side. Right. Okay. So to do the crossfade, we're going to want to change this value from 0 to 100. And the easiest way to do that is with an envelope. Envelope generator. That happens to be set to one second, which is the same rate that we have running right now in here. So if we run that, it's going to reach the end of its envelope at the same time that the pulse is output which for us right now is quite useful. So all we're going to do is connect that output to our video mixer. But our background is giving us a big flash. And that's not what we're looking for. So why is that happening? Well, it's because the value of the envelope generator is ramping in the wrong direction for the mix that we need. So we need to go from 100, value 0, to a value 1 of 0. Now you can see that our background is blending smoothly into the next video on a one second uh, fade time. Okay, that's great. We basically have the guts of our sequencer up and running. <clears throat> what do we want to add to this now? Well, it would be nice to have the, the ability to control the time. So a few simple things need to be, or, well, a few things need to be added so that we can easily control the time it puts on this. I'm just repatching this a little bit to clean it up. We want to be able to set this frequency input and the time input of the envelope generator from a single input. So because I know that we will never have a negative number for this value, uh, because we don't have any negative time, I'm going to use an absolute value as my input point. So if I want now to take a number, let's say 5, and if I mean that as seconds, and I want to convert that into frequency, which is in kil or hertz, I'm going to need a calculator actor. And I'm going to need to divide 1 by that value. So if I enter 5 there, see it's 0.2. So change that just update it all now we have it running every five seconds which is 0.2 hertz our transition time is still one second though we could easily have these con uh, we could easily have two separate inputs for these so our crossfade time could be different than our period time <coughs> but 
right now I'm just going to make them the same. It's going to be quicker and easier for me. <clears throat> because I happen to know that the time input on this requires it in milliseconds, although it's shown as one second, I'm going to need to take our input value and multiply it. Let's change that to I don't know, six. I'm going to need to multiply that by a thousand to get the correct number of milliseconds for our envelope time. All right, so switch that to another number. We now have a seven and a half second long transition. There we are, seven and a half second crossfade. When it's finished, another crossfade begins, seven and a half seconds. And that's looking pretty good. These three components. I'll just cut them right out of the game. User actor. I'm not sure I'm doing the best thing here, but I'm just kind of flowing with this. User input. Because we have that unit. We need a user input for the trigger. And we need uh, two user inputs for our videos. Video one, two is good. And we need a user output for our video out. Okay, that looks fine to me. And that's our um, save and update. What are we going to call that? We'll call that our video. Cross fader. All right. So now we've got our video cross fader. We might as well connect it up. Video one, video two. Why do I have an input? Oh, this is our time. I should I should set that to time. I like to label seconds as seconds and be a square brackets. And update this one more time. Okay. Oop. Like that. Um, I could even take these quickly. Add another user actor. Paste those. It's a simple one, but I think it'll clean things up a little. User input. That again. Oops, cancel. I put that on the wrong one. That's what we want to control there. We're going to call this time again in sex. And okay. User output. Trigger is absolutely fine for that. It doesn't need to be trigger one, it can be just trigger. Save, update. And we are going to call this. Um, Rename timed pulse. Sure. Timed pulse. Video cross fader. Over there. Just messing around with this a little bit to try to clean it up. Um, there's so many options. You could always do so many things. So let's connect those up. That's using the auto connection feature. And I'm going to need to get some sort of pulse running again here. Normally in it already run down, but in this case, this just makes my life easier and I think it's going to run fine. We need to connect our pulse to both of these and we need to also feed that time into both of them give it a three second fade and I think we're done with this we have a functioning four channel video switcher 